So welcome to the highlights of DDW uh, 2017 in Crohn's disease. Uh, there's some very exciting news here uh, this year that I'll try to summarize. Uh, first, there's several new mechanisms of action that have had updated data uh, at this meeting. Uh, the first one is one of the new JAK inhibitors, apatidacitinib, uh, which is a JAK3 inhibitor, which uh, demonstrated efficacy in a phase 2B uh, program in Crohn's disease. Why this is relevant is that the first JAK inhibitor that went into IBD actually failed in Crohn's disease, was positive in ulcerative colitis. So this gives us some hope that JAK inhibition may be uh, beneficial to patients with both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, we also have data on the new IL-20, long-term data on the new IL-23 inhibitor, rizitkizumab, uh, which showed efficacy once again in Crohn's disease. And this is particularly important because there's been recent studies in dermatology that if you look at a pure IL-12, uh, 20, or a pure IL-23 inhibitor compared to IL-12-23 inhibitor, the IL-23 seemed to allow us to give more drug and get better efficacy. And then for the first time here at DDW, we're going to see endoscopic data uh, that relates to the anti-SMAD7 mongersin, uh, which made a big splash several years ago with the publication in New England Journal of Medicine. Now we have a phase 2B study that not only looks at efficacy, but looks at endoscopic data and really shows that uh, this is the true deal and we look, are anticipating uh, what happens in the phase 3 program. Even though we have all of these new molecules, uh, there's some data that's going to change our practice with our existing molecules. Uh, uh, we're going to present uh, the results of the COM trial here. So for many years, we've been talking about treating beyond symptoms. And what COM showed that if you treat to biomarkers such as CRP or fecal calprotectin, that the patients did better with respect to mucosal healing compared to treating to, to symptoms alone. So this we anticipate is gonna be a big paradigm shift uh, in our practice. And finally, with that introduction of new entries into the market, um, there's this question about how do we sequence our drugs? And there's some interesting data that's just come out of Leuven, Belgium that looks at uh, vitalizumab uh, or intibio and suggests uh, not only that you may need higher levels of the drug or, or drug levels to achieve some of the endpoints, but if you had been previously exposed to an anti-TNF therapy, that those drug levels uh, were lower than in patients who had not been exposed to anti-TNF in the past. So it may sort of uh, give us the way forward for washout periods or sequencing of the drugs. So lots of uh, exciting stuff here that's gonna change our practice. Uh, I look forward to you watching these uh, summary videos uh, from my colleagues and I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you very much.